I'm Ann Emery. You're watching DataViz on the go, and I am not in love with Canva, at least not for DataViz and data storytelling. I was just on a TA call for a public health group, so we held their formal DataViz training yesterday, and then we're having four TA calls for them to bring their drafts and their questions, and we work through their infographics and one-pagers together. And one of the questions that just popped up was like, Ann, what do you think about Canva? Doesn't it have some really cool infographic templates? And I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I hate to be such a Debbie Downer about this, but the Canva templates are not, are not great. So I'm going to show you behind the scenes and I'm going to give you a heads up of like all the little things you have to tweak, which is basically everything. Okay. So this is what Canva looks like inside. In case you haven't used it before, you can see that I do use it for Instagram posts, announcing new blog posts and YouTube videos. I make my YouTube thumbnails in there. I make things like, uh, my nine year old made her ninth birthday, birthday invitation in there. Notice that you don't see any graphs in here. That's on purpose. Let's say we want to make some graphs though. Okay. We're going to go up to create a design. We put in our search term like infographic. Let's say we want this one, a nice portrait layout. And I'm on paid Canva, so I have all the templates. If you're on the free Canva, you get this many templates, okay? So I have everything that has the little like crown for pro. You might, you might not, that's okay. The free and paid templates though are both like the same in the sense that you're gonna have to roll up your sleeves and make some very intentional edits, just like all the software programs. I just don't want you to think that Canva is like perfect and it's gonna do all your work for you, that's not the case. Okay, so let's go with, let's say this one, okay? Now at a glance, you're like, that looks really nice. That's better than the 100 page dusty shelf report. Agree, absolutely. It is better than the 100 page dusty shelf report, but we still have to do some tweaks. So I'm gonna zoom in and show you with a fine toothed comb all the things that you've gotta leave some time to tweak on here. You're gonna have to fill in your brand colors and brand fonts, which is not the end of the world because there are presets in all the software programs, in Excel, in Tableau, in Power BI, in Canva. There are presets where it's a work hard once technique. You fill in your brand guide info once and then you don't have to do it again, okay? So you'd start with that, easy, easy. You'd have to un all caps this because mixed case is faster to read than all caps. You'd have to uncenter all this text and this and this and basically everything down below because left aligned text is fastest to read. So this template by default is accidentally adding time to people's day. Down here for this four-step diagram, what are the chances that your audience needs to see a four-step diagram first? Like one in a million chance. You'd probably have to choose a different diagram. Maybe you'd want a graph. Maybe you'd want a map. Maybe you want a step-by-step -step diagram, but it has three steps or five steps and not exactly four. So you're gonna have to like change the visual. Inside this visual though, you'd have to add in your words someplace. I don't know why it says one and one. That's redundant and weird. You'd have to say like, what is step one? Uh, and then you'd have to think like, well, does it fit up here? Does it fit down there? Where are you going to type it? Also, if this is truly a step-by-step -step linear process, then why does it have this wavy diagram? That's weird. That implies like ups and downs and undulations. It, it, it makes me think of something else. Okay. Step-by-step -step is not the same as ups and downs. Those are apples and oranges, different visuals needed. Down here, I am not a fan of the dumbed down, overly simplified gingerbread people for a million reasons. I've got tons of blog posts and YouTube videos about that and about what to do differently. So if you just look below this YouTube video, I'll link to a bunch of those. We are not going to have green and red because that's not colorblind friendly. It would need to be one dark brand color versus everything else grayed out. On this one, I don't know why they have all these demarcations on the side. That's probably too many, like three or four is probably the right number here. We're not going to do 3D. We're going to do 2D. 3D distorts the data. Let's look at, I'm going to zoom in even more to this one. Let's say you're trying to estimate the height of this yellow column. You would think, oh, like maybe I'll look here and just follow across this light gray grid line. Oh, it's 125. Well, is it? Or is it this one? Is it 150? Most software programs, the true answer is in the middle. 
which is like, to- like they've, there are studies on this where they ask people, estimate how tall this is. And people usually think, well, it's this one or it's this one. But the truth is it's this one. It's like whatever the halfway point is uh, of, of these two in the middle. Also, why are these all different colors? That's going to slow down comprehension. Why would we want circus tent colors here? It should be all one color or everything grayed out with one highlighted. You'd have to fill in your words down here. Your words here. You'd have to un all caps them. They're going to start to text wrap, which then you're going to have to be like, okay, well, do I have to like nudge those up a little bit? Cause they look kind of sloppy hanging down there. You'd have to make sure all those text boxes are aligned. If they get really long like this, well, then you'd have to change your column chart into a bar chart. So you need a different chart type altogether down here on all caps, uncentered, like we've talked about before, you'd have to add words. There are no words here. Like what, what does this thing mean? You need like 40%, 40% of what you need words. It's missing words. You'd have to fill in different icons. At least you get the idea like, Oh, I could have a donut with the icon in the middle. Great for ideas. I love Canva for ideas, but it's not, is, is not like this magic bullet that's just going to solve all your problems for you. It's just not like that. The color contrast is the wrong, in the wrong spot here. We've got this part should be the darkest and this part should be lighter. They did the opposite pre-attentive attribute, which is going to actually confuse and mislead people. Uh, down here, what are the chances that you need this exact org chart? Also, since when do org charts go left to right, aren't we used to seeing them more like top to bottom? I don't know if they're trying to be creative and be like, we don't have a top to bottom structure or if they just thought, well, that's what fits. Probably just that's what fits. But then in here, you might have to add like more rectangles or you might have to add taller rectangles or maybe this one branches down and this guy like supervises somebody. Maybe you don't want an org chart. Maybe you want a different chart here altogether. Um, This one is totally wrong. This is wrong. It's talking about step one, step two, step three. Why does step one start over there? Shouldn't it start like in the clockwise, like the, the one position? It seems weird over here. It needs to go around, but then this isn't the diagram about steps that go around. This is just like a decorative, like honeycomb picture. This is a part to whole diagram. It's talking about like it, this diagram implies there's a topic and there's little offshoots. There's little subcategories, subtopics, but the example they filled in was step-by-step linearity. There's a mismatch in what this diagram shows. And then the example words, um, I, you know, I'm just not in love with this. I don't think any of the templates are, um, much better here. They, they give you good ideas, but you're still going to have to roll up your sleeves. I would argue that once you get a little bit of software training under your belt, it's probably faster to start with a blank PowerPoint slide or a blank word doc or a blank, uh, a blank publisher, a blank heck a blank Microsoft paint. It's probably just better to start from a blank slate and fill in what you do need correctly than to start with a filled in template and have to change every single thing about it. I just don't see the time savings there. I'm happy to be proved wrong. If you can show me examples of Canva templates that are like amazing right out of the gate, link to them, link to them. My mind can be changed. Help me change it. Help me see Canva in a new light.